Sporting an RTX 3060 graphics card and Intel's new Core i7-12700H processor, it may come as a bit of a surprise to see the MSI Katana GF66 on sale for £1,099 in the UK. In fact, the GPU and CPU combination, coupled with 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, a 1TB SSD and a 240Hz 1080p display, make this laptop seem like a bit of a steal for its just over one grand asking price. But how do MSI's overall design and connectivity choices stack up? And how does the blend of hardware perform inside this 15.6 inch class chassis? Let's take a closer look. Starting out with the overall design, I wouldn't say that we've seen anything particularly fancy with the MSI Katana GF6612UE. This laptop takes the form of a generic 15.6 inch chassis, not particularly thin bezels, not particularly sleek thicknesses, and not particularly low weight. You get a roughly 2.25 kilogram laptop that is over an inch thick with the screen down, or about 23 millimeters thick with the screen open. That weight may seem okay, but you have to add the best part of half a kilogram for the 240 watt barrel style power brick. Sleek and eye-catching, this laptop is not, particularly with its largely plastic construction. You do get a good allocation of cooling ventilation on the side, rear and bottom though, so that may well appeal to a budget gaming audience, more so than slick bezels and metal construction. Primary to the under the hood hardware is the Intel Core i7-12700H processor. This chip features 6 performance cores and 8 efficient cores, giving you 20 threads total. It can turbo as high as 4.7 GHz with a 35 to 115 watt rated power range, but that depends on the manufacturer's deployment, which we'll analyze in this review. You also get an NVIDIA RTX 3060 laptop GPU in its 6 GB form. This is rated at 105 watts maximum power in MSI's deployment, according to the spec sheet. A 105 watt RTX 3060 should be a genuinely competent laptop graphics card, particularly at this price point. Memory is 2x8 gigs of DDR4 3200 MHz, and that's sensible versus DDR5 because it's cheaper, so it helps the laptop hit the budget. And for the SSD, we've got a PCIe Gen 4x4 one terabyte drive, and there's also an additional M.2 slot if you want to add a second drive on in the future. Focusing on the screen, MSI deploys a 15.6 inch 1920x1080 IPS level display. That is fine from a budget perspective, but it's the 240Hz refresh rate that will really appeal to gamers. No, the screen is not the best. Peak brightness is mediocre. Color quality is just decent. And the sharpness is undeniably lacking given the 15.6 inch and 1080p combination. But that refresh rate really does steal the show and helps transition the screen into an enjoyable experience for gaming thanks to the fluid motion of 240Hz. Looking at the physical connectivity of MSI's Katana GF66, this is another area where we see the undeniably budget outcome for this laptop. You get three USB type A ports, one of which is actually old USB 2 with the other two being five gigabits per second. The single USB type C port is also five gigabits per second and does not handle power or display output. You get gigabit ethernet and 4K 60 HDMI, which are good to see. And finishing off is the combo audio jack and the barrel DC power connector. So to summarize, there's only one USB type C, You've got only one video output for high resolution and none of the USB ports are 10 gigabits per second capable on the speed front. That's pretty atrocious for anybody who wants to connect more than a single display or just a handful of low priority peripherals. Clearly Thunderbolt is also missing, but that's probably fine and understandable for this caliber and class of laptop. Thankfully, MSI does deploy 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 capability via the Intel AX201 adapter and that also gives you Bluetooth 5.2. In terms of peripherals, there's a 720p30 webcam, but it doesn't support Windows Hello, and there's no fingerprint scanner, so advanced, more secure sign-in options are very limited with this MSI unit. The speakers are a pair of 2-watt units, which genuinely surprised me with decent punch to the bass, good maximum loudness, and solid ability to maintain decent quality at high volume outputs. Of course, that's just in my opinion. Trackpad sizing is modest for my giant hands, but the responsiveness and flow of the implementation and the solid clicky buttons were good. And the keyboard is good for my personal preference and once again large hands. I had very few accidental key strikes, 
because of the sensible key pitch segregating neighbours. I also felt that the actuation point was clear and firm, which enhanced comfort. An MSI includes a number pad, which I personally find pointless, but it is there. One point to note is that the backlit keyboard cannot be changed away from red, that's the only colour, but it does have three steps of brightness, so you can turn it off if you want to. For the battery, a 53.5 watt hour 3 cell unit is deployed and used alongside the massive 240 watt power brick that uses a barrel style connector. There's no USB-C charging at all on this laptop, even if you just want to trickle charge overnight, and that's pretty disappointing and means you will have to carry that pretty sizable brick around with you wherever you go. Pricing for the MSI Katana GF66 in its 12UE form as we are testing is £1,099 at Curry's in the UK. This makes it one of the more affordable gaming laptops on the market and the price looks particularly good when we factor in the 12th gen Core i7, the RTX 3060 laptop GPU and that 240Hz screen. So let's get into testing. As always for laptops, we test in the out-of-the-box state with minimal adjustments made to anything in the system other than installing our test software, the latest Windows updates, uh, a latest BIOS revision if there's one available, and we usually uninstall the junk uh, AV scan software, in this case it's Norton, we got rid of that junk pretty quickly. <laughs> for the default power profile, we're using Balanced in MSI Center. This is the one that it says is recommended. You do have an extreme performance option but that's just quite aggressive basically. And you also have a smart auto option, but I didn't really have much luck with that in my testing. I have to say that MSI does okay for minimal junk software being installed. Other than Norton, there isn't really much on there that I'd want to remove quickly. MSI Center is far more lightweight than it used to be, but I'd also say it really does lack on some actually useful features. If you want to change the power mode, there's not really all that much information as to what each profile will do. If you want to change the charging curve or the charging speed for fast charging or limited to 90% battery capacity, you can't really do that. And as far as updates go, there were plenty of updates available for this laptop, even from the likes of an NVIDIA graphics driver. But in MSI Center, on the update side of things, it didn't suggest any updates to us. So that's pretty basic to say the least. As always, if you want more details, check out our previous reviews that both myself and Leo have been doing recently for some of the laptops on the Kicker website and on the YouTube channel. And if you want more information about the test procedures and the settings and all that stuff, head on over to the Kicker website. Let's jump into it. MSI looks to operate the Core i7-12700H at around 38 watts long duration package power draw in the balanced power profile. This corresponds to around 2.25 GHz average frequency for the P core specifically. Not gluing the CPU to a typical 45 watt power draw is disappointing and suggests that MSI has willingly left performance on the table. That's kind of odd given that this test doesn't even add in the GPU heat for the equation. With both the CPU and GPU being loaded in a gaming scenario under the balanced profile, we saw the power allocation trend at around 125 watts combined. This was typically segregated as around 25 to 35 watts for the CPU and 85 to 90 watts for the GPU. That translates into around mid 2 gigahertz for the CPU P cores with a temperature around the 90 degrees Celsius mark. And we recorded around 1500 megahertz average for the RTX 3060 laptop GPU clocks with a temperature around the high 80s mark. We couldn't help but feel that MSI's balanced power mode left performance on the table. So we tested out the extreme performance cooler boost mode. This ramped up fan speeds massively and made the noise output unpleasant. It did improve power allocation for the CPU only load though, with around 75 to 80 watts now being delivered under long duration testing. The temperature was bumping up against the 99 degrees Celsius throttling point, but frequency on the P cores was improved by around 1 GHz to around 3.25 GHz. For gaming though, we saw little change under the extreme cooler boost performance mode. The combined CPU and GPU power still trended around 125 watts. The GPU seemed to get a slightly higher share of power, around 90 to 100 watts for 1.6 GHz, instead of 80 to 90 watts for 1.5 GHz under the balanced mode, but this just ate away at the CPU's power budget. Noise output using the balanced power profile for gaming is actually fine. 
We recorded around 47 to 48 dBA output from a measurement point above the trackpad, near to where a user's head would be. This was after an extended gaming session of F1 2020 at 1920 by 1080. I guess the only annoying point with noise output is that idle conditions are not very optimized, even in the silent profile. SSD performance from the Micron 2450 is mediocre, but is absolutely fine for this caliber of laptop. In fact, we've seen this drive in several more expensive Asus laptops. This is supposedly a PCIe Gen 4x4 SSD, but there's nothing in its performance metrics to indicate that it is any better than a Gen 3 SSD. It kept reasonably cool in MSI's laptop though. Battery life is very poor at 3 hours and 18 minutes in PC Mark 10. That's down to the modest 53.5 watt hour battery capacity for a H series CPU and 105 watt DGPU. The lack of USB-C charging makes quick top-ups less convenient too, particularly with a large power brick one will have to lug around. Intel's Core i7-12700H in the MSI Katana GF66 does well to hang with the rising competitors in the short Cinebench rendering test, but the longer duration Blender runs nullify Intel's initial massive power surges and swing the pendulum in favour of MSI's rising equipped competitors. Handbrake shows the same trend. Though MSI's GF66 does do well to compete against the other Intel 12th gen competitors, despite its significantly lower price tag. 7-zip is not quite as positive though, with even the power-restricted Asus ROG Flow Z13 opening up a performance lead. Memory bandwidth from the 16 gigs of 3200MHz DDR4 is positive, and is only handsomely beaten by LPDDR4 or LPDDR5 in ADA's test. The latency of plain old DDR4 is a solid too. Single-threaded performance is where the Katana GF66 is very strong. That's thanks to the lofty 4.7 GHz rated boost clock of the Core i7-12700H, coupled with its superb architecture. But the performance drop-off in back-to-back -back Cinebench NT runs is far less impressive. Here, we see the influence of Intel's lofty power surge in the initial few seconds of benchmark tests. Disallowing for that power surge, as is the case for sustained all-core tasks, can drop performance by 13%. 3D Mark Time Spy took a very strong liking to our MSI Katana GF66 test sample, likely due to preferential power allocations during the test. 3D Mark CPU profile test scored strongly too, as did PC Mark 10 for the overall result. Our charts perhaps paint an awkward picture of the MSI Katana GF66 given that it is compared to pricier competitors, but we can look at the performance results in isolation. Over 60 FPS average in Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p ultra high is a positive start, and Borderlands 3 pushes a little higher for its badass image quality preset. F1 2020 runs at 128 FPS average, so users wanting to push the laptop's 240Hz display for high refresh rate gaming will be pleased by this result. Notable in Far Cry 6 is how competitive the GF66 is versus the pack in this game. This looks to be induced by CPU power and frequency limitations which is fine for the GF66 holding its own. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has MSI's unit putting in a very positive showing and pushing well above triple digit average FPS, but Watch Dogs Legion proves too stressful for the RTX 3060 in its ultra preset mode, averaging below 60 FPS. For 1080p gaming, MSI's chosen hardware combination looks to be very smart given the budget constraints. Drop in image quality will push AAA titles into triple digit average frame rates with ease, and there's genuine possibility to push near that 240Hz refresh rate with some less demanding or older titles. Let's be perfectly honest, there's not much glitz and glamour to the MSI Katana GF66 gaming laptop. Its design is far from sleek, it feels undeniably plasticky, and the quality touches are rationed. But that's absolutely fine, given that MSI has prioritised an excellent combination of hardware and a very competitive price point. Squeezing a 105 watt RTX 3060 and a Core i7-12700H into a £1,099 laptop is impressive. Adding in the 16 gigs of DDR4 memory and solid 1TB SSD is good, but with a 240Hz screen sweetening the deal, the Katana GF66 really does look to be an alluring package. Gaming performance was solid in our testing. We did see some instances where the Katana was punching well above its price point, and we had no real issues running our test games close to their maximum image quality settings at perfectly playable frame rates. Plus, lesser demanding titles will look smooth at lofty FPS numbers on the 240Hz display. There is definitely CPU performance left on the table though, and that's particularly true if you opt for the recommended and sensible 
balanced power profile that limits sustained CPU package power to just below 40 watts in our testing. Of course, the extreme performance profile fixes that, but it brings along a significant noise and efficiency penalty. So once again, if we're going to be honest, the MSI Katana GF66 has plenty of downsides. The screen quality is mediocre at best, aside from the excellent refresh rate. The battery life is pretty atrocious and the charging options feel archaic. Physical port connectivity is simply out of touch with the 2022 laptop market. And the glaringly cheap chassis construction certainly leaves plenty to be desired. But if you're simply looking for a cost-effective gaming laptop that's just going to sit there and push pixels from your favourite games onto its own screen, then the MSI Katana GF66 does a really good job. It's not fancy or finesse, but at £1,099 in the UK, we feel that this laptop packs a good amount of horsepower into a wallet-friendly package. And to be perfectly frank, that's the main thing that many interested, budget-friendly buyers are really going to want to hear. I've been Luke Hill for Kit Group. Thank you for watching this video review of the MSI Katana GF66 12UE gaming laptop. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Are you actually quite impressed by the amount of horsepower in terms of graphics and CPU plus a one terabyte SSD that MSI has managed to squeeze into this package at £1,099 in the UK? As always, if you like the video, give us a like and subscribe. Hit the comment section to give us your opinion as usual. Uh, hit the bell icon for notifications. Do all that YouTube stuff. Please do check out the written review on the Kickeroo website. That really helps us out. Keep in touch with us on social media and the like. Social? Social media and the likes. And I will catch you in the next one.